So I found this article yesterday, top 25 most brutal torture techniques ever devised in history. And I figured, you know what, this would be perfect to do a video on and see how primitive and disgusting we were as human beings, or are rather. Am I right, lads, or am I right, lads? What we got first, we have the tub. Doesn't look very menacing, we'll be honest. Bit rusty, though. Not a nice looking tub, is it? I don't think I want to go into that. Known as the punishment of sitting in the tub. Sounds really bad. The convicted person will be placed in a wooden tub with only their head sticking out. So it's basically a bath. After that, the executioner would paint their faces with milk and honey and soon flies would begin to feed on them. Well, that was a curveball. The victim was also fed regularly and would end up swimming in their excrement. Ugh. After a few days, maggots and worms would devour their body as they decayed alive. That sounds absolutely atrocious. And that's number 25? Well, we're in for quite the treat, aren't we? 24, the brazen bull. What is this picture? It's like a weird sunbed. It was designed in ancient Greece. A solid piece of brass was cast with a door on the side that could be opened and latched. The victim would be placed inside the bull and a fire set underneath it until the metal became literally yellow as it was heated. My favorite color, so I don't think I'd even mind this one. The victim was slowly then be roasted to death all while screaming in agonizing pain. The bull was purposely designed to amplify these screams and make them sound like the bellowing of a bull. Weird fetish, not gonna lie. If you're into screaming and bulls, then this is the one for you. Screw your bondage, this is what you want to go for. Impalement. <laughs> Picture looks brutal. Look at her on the right. She's like, Ugh, not a happy bunny. Given its name, it should come as no surprise that this was the most favored method of execution by Vlad the Impaler. <laughs> What a name. That sounds like a porn star name. In 15th century Romania, the victim was forced to sit up on a sharp, sit up on a sharp and thick pole. When the pole was then raised upright, the victim left to slide down the pole with her own weight. It could take the victim three days to die using this method, and it had been said that Vlad once did this to 20,000 people while enjoying a meal. See on the picture, it's going through their belly or their nipples. This says sit on it. So you sit on the sharp, thick pole? This sounds like a weird orgy gone wrong. Heretic's fork. What is this photo? Is this a new kind of cutlery? This torture device consisted of a metal piece with two opposed bi-pronged forks attached to a belt or strap. One end of the device was pushed under the chin, the other to the sternum. 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 And the strap was used to secure the victim's neck to the tool while the victim hung from the ceiling or was somehow suspended so that they would not sleep. If their heads dropped, the prongs would pierce their throat and chest. <laughs> what? So regardless then, you're gonna die. Unless a guy said to you, you know what mate, if you can stay awake for five days, I'll allow it. I will not kill you and you can live. Then yeah, it's worth it. But if literally you're gonna die anyway, fuck it. You may as well just get it over with, you know? 21, neck torture. Sounds like my daily struggle every day. Ugh. Humiliating and painful. This punishment was something of an endurance test where the victim would be hooked into a neck device either made of metal or wood. See, metal just seemed like it would be 10 times worse than wood. I don't know why. Which prevented the victim from adjusting into a comfortable position. The cruelty of this punishment lies within the fact that they were unable to lie down, eat, or lower their head for days. An exclamation mark right there for the extra days. Did you have this punishment lie within? It should be lies within, lies within. What is this website? List25.com. Sort your grammar out. 20. Ah, oh, the old crucifixion. Jesus' favorite pastime. Principally practiced in antiquity. I like that word. It's a nice word right there. Though it remains practiced in some countries today, it is one of the most well-known execution methods due to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Told you it was his favorite pastime. Who needs Xbox when you've got a nice crucifixion going on? It is a deliberately slow and painful execution where the condemned person is tied or nailed to a large wooden cross and left to hang until they die, which usually takes days until they break out in song. 19, the Judas Cradle. What is this picture? Posing for a painting. Wait, is that that's going in his bum? That's going right up the wrecked. Closely related to impalement, this gruesome punishment entailed having the victim sit on the pyramid-shaped cradle, after which they would be forced down on by its ropes with the intent of stretching the victim's orifice over a long period of time, slowly impaling them. Basically, you put it up your bum hole. To add to the overall humiliation, the victim was usually naked and the device rarely washed. Eww. I mean, it's still gross anyway, but... Eww. If the torture did not kill you, the infection contracted from it would. That is the worst one so far. It's so gross. Anyone out of there wants to, you know, up their anal game. But get fisting. This is where you want to go. The fucking Judas Cradle.
God. Can it get worse than that? I personally don't think so, but we'll see. 18. The lead sprinkler. Usually filled with molten lead, tar, boiling water, or boiling oil, it was used to torture victims by dripping the contents onto their stomach or other body parts, like the eyes. Ouch. Using this device, the torturer would proceed to pour molten silver on the victim's eyes, which resulted in agonizing pain and eventual death. People say the world's fucked up now, but the lead sprinkler? 17. Iron Maiden. The classic. This torture device consisted of an iron cabinet with a hinged front and spike covered interior. Sounds quite fancy, actually. Can the state agent walking in? So we have this nice Iron Maiden. It's very nice covered interior. Sufficient enough to enclose a human being. Once inside its con nickel frame, can flame? Cut I can't even fucking speak. The victim would be unable to move due to the great number of steel spikes and pinning them from every direction. The interrogator would scream questions at the victim while poking them with jagged edges. Fucking Jesus. This makes 24 look really tame. Jack Bowers like, where's my wife? Breaks the guy leg. He just got the Iron Maiden out. Slammed them in there. 16. Coffin torture. The most preferred torture technique in the Middle Ages was known as coffin torture. This method involved placing the victim inside a metal cage roughly the size of a human body, hence the name. That makes complete sense. The torturers also forced overweight victims into smaller cages to heighten their discomfort as they hung from a tree of gallows. So if you're fat, that's gonna be awful. Generally, they would be left there until the crows came to feed on their remains. That one's not too bad because you'll be alive, you know. You're hanging in the Town. At least you can have a bit of chatter before you die, you know what I mean? Just talk to some of your mates before you die in the cage. How's it going, Bobby? Yeah, not good. Did you catch Suicide Squad the other day? Yeah, it was a great movie. Yeah. Oh, wait, it comes to crows. Uh, I'm dying now. 15, the thumb screw. Though there are many variations of this torture device, the thumb screw or Pillywinks? Pillywinks? What a name, I'm loving it. All function the same. They were designed to slowly crush not only the fingers and toes, but larger devices were also used to crush knees and elbows. There is also the head crusher. <laughs> A head crusher. Its primary intention was to extract confessions from victims and it was first used in medieval times. Excellent. 14. Rope torture. To be fair, the guy on the right doesn't look that upset. He's kind of just like, oh, whatever. Just get it over with, mate. Like, I'm not in the mood for this shit. A rope is the easiest to use of all torture devices since it is easy to find and can easily be fashioned to inflict a number of terrible retributions. For example, it could be used to tie the victim to a tree, leaving the victim exposed with no way of defending himself from animals or other humans. It could be used to hang victims at the gallery for entertainment purposes while ultimately inflicting death. And it could be fashioned to restrain the victim's limbs while attaching the other ends to horses who would then... They spell it wrong again! God damn it, list 25. That should be then. Then be made to run, consequently severing the limbs. Ouch, kabibbly wibbly. At least you get a nice little ride before you die, you know? The horse pulls you off, you're like, woo! Then you die, so I mean, I guess it's not a fun, really, is it? Guillotine. Mm. God looks well proud of his head. Hey, guys, check out my head. Like, like my head? Look at my fucking head. One of the most notorious forms of execution, the guillotine was made of a razor sharp blade attached to a rope. The victim's head was placed in the middle of the frame as the blade dropped, severing the victim's heads from the body. Since the decapitation was considered to be an instant and painless event, at least less painful than the other torture device methods, it was often considered the most humane method of execution. I can't speak, I'm sorry, I'm stirring. I'm going over the place. I'm sure this is torture for you right now. This is a torture device for you. Listen to me trying to read this out. That one's kind of quick and easy, you know. Eh, the rack. And I don't mean the booby kind. Designed to dislocate every joint of the victim's body, it was believed to be the most painful form of medieval torture. This torture device was made out of a wooden frame with two ropes fixed to the bottom and the other two tied into the handle on top. Once the victim was bound and placed on top of the rack, the torturer would proceed to turn the handle. That must be a good job. I don't have any qualifications you need for that shit. Eventually, the victim would be stretched till his limbs were dislocated. The torturers, however, just to make sure those limbs were indeed dislocated, would continue to turn the wheel until the limbs were completely torn off the victim's body. Oh, God, that's so bad. That one freaks me out a lot. I'm not into that at all. What was wrong with people, man? Ooh, tongue terror. I don't know if I want to read this, man. Eyes and tongue stuff always freaks me out. Looking like an oversized pair of scissors that could effortlessly cut the victim's tongue. Oh! Their mouth will be forced open with a device called a mouth opener. That makes sense. Creative name right there. And then the iron tongue terror would uncomfortably twitch the tongue with its rough grippers. Once a firm hold was maintained, the screw would be firmly tightened and the victim's tongue would be roughly be torn out. Fuck! So basically, uh, uh, 
Uh, with less spit on your fingers, obviously. Not a fan of that one. I'm kind of shivering a bit. I can just see somebody in the bedroom one day being like, hey girl, I'm gonna show you my tongue terror. And she's like, that sounds really fun. Just whips out the fucking actual tongue terror. Here we go. 10 left. Jesus. I'm gonna have nightmares tonight, I swear. This guy does not look very happy. He's got a bit of ketchup on him as well. Might want to get that sorted out, mate. Just saying. Being in an enclosure with rats is torture enough, but apparently this is not enough for medieval times. Oh, it never is for medieval times. They're so extreme. One of the most sadistic of all torture techniques involved having a cage with one open side strapped against the victim's body. It would then be filled with large rodents and a heating element which would be placed on the other side of the cage. The rodents' natural instinct led them to flee the intense heat. In order to escape, they would burrow through the victim's body with fatal results. Fatal results sounds a bit tame. There's a movie where they do that. I forget which movie it was. Anybody knows, leave a comment down below. Oh, this does not look like a nice chair. <laughs> Now. Also known as the Judas chair, it was a terrible intimidating torture device that was added to dungeons in the Middle Ages. What's wrong with the Lower Ages or the High Ages, huh? That's so lame. Used until the 1800s in Europe, this chair was laid with 500 to 1,500 spikes on every surface with type straps on restrain, sorry, to restrain its victims. Made of iron, it can also contain spaces for heating elements beneath the seat. Ooh. Ooh, comes with heating too. Wow. It was often used to scare people into giving confessions as they watched others being tortured on the device. I can't stop staring at it. This is, that just does not look fun. Cement shoes. What is this one all about? Why is that a picture? It's like a fish trying to take a selfie in the war, but actually had the front camera open. Cement shoes were introduced by the American Mafia when they executed enemies. Traitors and spies by placing their feet inside the cinder block and then filling them up with wet cement. Once it dried, the victim would be thrown alive into a river or other deep body of water. I've seen that in the movies. The breast ripper. Oh no. The titty ripper. I guess if you're flat chested, you get to avoid that one, right? But then again, you might get the fucking Judas triangle at the rectum. So I mean, pick <laughs> your poison, I guess. Though women were also subject to many of the torture techniques on this page. This is one that was specifically designed for them. Oppressing women even back then. This is gonna trigger some feminists, let me tell you. Used to cause major your blood loss, the claws, the claws, which were often red hot, would be placed on the exposed breasts as the spike penetrated beneath the skin. It would then be pulled or jerked, causing large chunks of flesh to come off of it. So it's basically a really bad hatchet boob job. Crocodile shears. What is this? That is one cheery little croc. Often used to mutilate those who would attempt to assassinate the king, this iron pincer was heated red hot before used to clamp down on the victim's appendages and tearing them from their bodies. Simple, effective, and it's a crocodile. What more do you want from me? Republican marriage. <laughs> To be fair, marrying a Republican will be pretty bad. I'm not into politics, I just figured, you know, make a joke about it. So don't, don't, don't look too much into that, okay? Besides the guillotine and burning at the stake, this act of torture was employed by John Baptiste Carrier during the French Revolution. It involved binding naked males and females together and then throwing them into icy waters to drown. When water was unavailable, they would just be run through with swords or bayonets. <laughs> That's so extreme! Oh, mate, ran out of water. Fuck it. This was a preferred method used to execute nuns and priests during that time. But hey, at least that when there's some sort of equality, they die together in the freezing cold. You know what? I've been in plunge pools. These guys are being pussies, man. Number four, the breaking wheel. Just judging from this picture alone, I don't even know what to make of that. The definition of a mangled mess. Also known as the Catherine wheel, this is a torture device used to slowly kill the victim. Used. Get your shit together, list 25. First, the victim's limbs were tied to the spokes of a large wooden wheel, which would then be slowly revolved as the torturer simultaneously smashed the victim's limbs with an iron hammer to break them in numerous places. It just sounds so casual when I say it out loud. Got a hammer. No, just smash them. Why not? Your limbs are getting smashed. Uh, just thought you should know that. Smash, smash. As the bones were broken, the victim would be left on the wheel to die or could be placed on top of a tall pole so the birds could feed on their flesh while still alive. That's overkill, but good for the birds. This was slow indeed, since it could have taken days before the victims would die from dehydration. Sometimes a cuba de grace, love of mercy, that's what she said to me, was employed by ordering the executioner to deal a fatal blow on the victim's chest and stomach to end their agony. Spanish donkey. Mmm. That one looks pretty harmless, to be honest. What? One of the torture devices during the Spanish Inquisition. This is probably one of the most gruesome of them all. Okay, well, I guess I was wrong about that. The victim is put astride, naked, on a donkey-like apparatus, which is actually a vertical wooden board with a sharp V edge on top of it. After that, the torturer would add varying weights on the victim's feet until finally the wedge slides through the victim's body. 
I'm legit holding my balls as I'm saying this. Now even worse for women. Oh no. Far. Imagine some woman going through that like, oh my pussy. And even for men, that would be awful. Oh, I can't believe these actually existed. This one looks just as bad. What is that? That guy looks demonic as balls. And that guy looks like a weird little goblin man. So two left, saw torture. In this method, the victim is hung upside down so that the blood will rush to their heads and keep them conscious during the long torture. The torturer would then saw through the victim's bodies until they were completely sawed in half. Most were cut up to the abdomen to prolong the agony. <laughs> What's more weird is the people that actually participated in this. They must have liked it somewhat or agreed to do it. Like, they took on the job. They volunteered for this shit. Last one. Here we go. Number one. Hanged, drawn, and quartered. During medieval times, a penalty of high treason in England. Why, England? Why? Drawn and quartered in public, and though it was abolished in 1814, it has been responsible for the death of thousands of people. In this torture technique, the victim is dragged in a wooden frame called a hurdle to the place of execution. They would then be hanged by the neck for a short period of time until they are near death, followed by disembowelment and castration where the entrails and genitalia are burned in front of the victim. Fun times for the whole family. The victim would then be divided into four separate parts and beheaded. This is like really elaborate and just overkill. Well, there we go. The 25 most brutal torture techniques. Let me know which one you thought was the worst in the comments below. Let me know your number and then give me your reaction. How about your reaction to it? I personally think the one with the pyramid thing when you sit on it and it's all disease and it goes at your rectum and it's just not a fun time for anybody. That one was the worst for me. That and a Spanish donkey. I'm not a big fan of donkeys, so you know. Hope you're enjoy and I'll see you in the next video. But for now, I'm going to go torture myself. I'm going to rewatch the Ghostbusters 2016 remake. You know what? I'd actually rather do the sword torture than watch that again. <laughs>